321. Studios of the Autism Channel in Palm Beach. This is the Autism Channel World News with Tracy Cooper. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of everyone here at the Autism Channel, we hope that those of you who celebrated Christmas had a wonderful day with family and friends. What is sticky gaze? According to the authors of a recent study, it could be an early and valuable warning sign of autism. The study, published in the journal Behavioral Brain Research, finds that babies who are eventually diagnosed with autism were found to have stared at objects later in development than babies who are not found to be on the spectrum. When a baby picks up an object, such as a bottle or toy, his or her eyes tend to linger on the object after picking it up. Neonatal researchers refer to this as sticky gaze or sticky attention and define it as a trait common to infants before age one. After turning one year old, Babies are expected to unstick their gaze and look somewhere else after grabbing an object. The ability to divert focus to another person or object is considered a key marker in child development, as babies learn to move from stimuli and survey their surroundings for other objects or people. However, prior studies have found that the sticky gaze stays this way past the first birthday in children on the autism spectrum. This recent study expanded on previous research to track just how often this form of attention remained in children. The study followed a group of babies from six months of age to 36 months, culminating in an autism screening. Researchers found that all babies, whether diagnosed with autism or not, displayed a sticky gaze on objects at six months. However, prior studies have found that the sticky gaze stays this way past the first birthday in children on the autism spectrum. This recent study expanded on previous research to track just how often this form of attention remained in children. The study followed a group of babies from six months of age to 36 months, culminating in an autism screening. Researchers found that all babies, whether diagnosed with autism or not, displayed a sticky gaze on objects at six months. From there, however, the results diverged. While children who were not diagnosed with an ASD moved on from sticky attention, with only 22% doing so at 12 months, and none at all at 24 months, this was not the case for children who developed autism. Among these children, sticky gaze remained at 12 months 58% of the time, and at 24 months 36% of the time. Though both groups seem to have outgrown sticky attention by 36 months, the window between 6 months and 36 months could prove instructive for both parents and professionals in diagnosing autism as soon as possible. Autism World News will continue with Tracy Cooper right after this. The Autism Channel needs your help. We're setting a goal of reaching as many of the one half billion people touched by autism on this planet. Please visit our website. Click to help us reach the world. I'm Michael Precourt, film critic, and this is the Autism Channel. Here again is Tracy Cooper. Though raising or taking care of any child with special needs can be taxing, a study at West Virginia University finds that for these parents and caretakers, dealing with autism could be the most taxing of all. According to the study published in the medical journal Autism, caregivers have more difficulty assessing services and report a greater effect on family life than caregivers for children with cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, or mental health conditions such as anxiety or depression. Researchers studied over 18,000 caregivers of children with mental health conditions or developmental disabilities. Of that group, it was those responsible for a child with autism 
who reported the most difficulty with obtaining services and coordinating care. This subgroup also reported the highest incidence of financial difficulty and strain on family. What does this mean? According to WVU researchers, this speaks to the extent to which the American healthcare system needs to improve the services offered to those affected by the autism spectrum. In Glasgow, Scotland, a pub is facing some claims of discrimination for refusing to formally seat a family whose sons are on the autism spectrum. At the Griffin Pub in downtown Glasgow, the Steele family was refused a table in the dining area and instead offered one at the bar, which Tracy Steele feels was discriminatory due to her triplets, Bobby, Stuart, and Glenn, being on the spectrum. According to Ms. Steele, Bobby is more autistic than his brothers, and his actions caused a waitress at the Griffin to admonish Ms. Steele for not warning the establishment that her sons were autistic. Robert McBean of the National Autistic Society Scotland's chapter recommended that pubs and restaurants work with the NAS to increase awareness and better handle such situations. And finally, art therapy for the autism spectrum is about to get a big boost in the UK, and it comes from one of the stars of Downton Abbey. Sophie McShera, who plays Daisy Mason on the critically beloved British drama, will help to launch the Art Space, a social outreach program in South Yorkshire, England. One of its program is called, fittingly, Artistic Spectrum. This service provides art therapy sessions for people on the autism spectrum. Art Space will open to the public on January 10th. Thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. So we are going to show you how, like for example, in school or business, how we can help your children or you even sit more upright mm -hmm. by improving those muscles through these exercises. And again, we're using no equipment, right? Yes. All right. Don't miss Coach Dave, an expert in exercise for those on and off the spectrum.